Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me this morning from Independent Living, I've got Cheryl and Carol. I just love these guys. This rolls off the tongue here. Good morning, ladies. Thank you for coming out to uh, the Talking Fitchburg set. What do you think? First timers. Great. What a wonderful community <laughs> service. It's it's we've got it we've got a lucky here in Fitchburg, let me tell you. And we're lucky to have you guys on today. And we're talking about medication management, um, making it simple uh, for keeping track of your pills and prescriptions and uh, and other medications or or, or things like that. Uh, which not only is great for seniors, but for myself, I can never remember to to take a pill. Like I just got off a prescription. And I forgot, like, every other night, I'm like, did I take that or not? No. Anyway. I... We have some wonderful tools to assist you with that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so let's kick it off here. Um, how prevalent is medication use among the elderly? Well, believe it or not, about a third of all prescriptions written in the United States are taken by senior citizens. And the average senior citizen takes about five prescriptions. The range can be anywhere from zero prescriptions, most people take three or four, up to over 20. Cheryl has a number of clients who take um, a fair number of medications, and she helps keep those straight for those folks. Yeah, and uh, how can medications cause problems for, for the elderly? Well, medications are often a culprit when somebody takes a tumble or takes a fall. Um, due to medication interactions, sometimes there's a little overdose, and believe it or not, a quarter of all Americans age 65 and over fall each year, and falls are in the top three leading causes of fatal injuries for the elderly or for senior citizens. The first one is medication overdoses, accidental overdoses. The second one is motor vehicle accidents, and then, of course, the third one is falls, and many falls are also related directly or in a or indirectly to medication administration. And uh, the results of the hospitalizations, can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely. So, okay, so the goal anymore is to not have folks go to the hospital or go to the emergency room. It's expensive, and people do better in their own homes. So I have some just amazing statistics for you. 15% of hospitalizations in the United States involve the elderly and adverse drug reactions. Um, also, complications put elderly folks back into the hospital. And do you know that more than half of people over the age of 70 say that nobody ever taught me about my medications? I did not know about those interactions. And as we know, nurses in the hospital, physicians, pharmacists, we all try to do a wonderful job. But adult learners, I think the statistic is we learn what about or retain about 12% of what is taught to us. Um, more than half, um, like I said, of people over the age of 70 don't recall people teaching them about their medications. And nearly 18% of Medicare patients are readmitted to the hospital within 30 days of discharge, and with not within 90 days, as many as 35% of Medicare patients are readmitted to the hospital. And of course, Medicare does a great job of tracking all those numbers for us. If you um, have multiple medical problems, your rate of readmission is even higher. And then older adults who live alone without a support system, um, the statistic is even higher for that. And of course, that's where home care um, comes in because we can certainly help bridge that gap. And uh, Medicare says that one out of every six hospitalizations can be prevented. Yeah, the, the, those are some startling statistics. Yes, they are. Um, uh, but uh, I, both a lot of us here work in public safety as well mm -hmm. and have seen this firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is why we have you here today. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the management of, of medications and, mm -hmm. and the role it can play. Mm -hmm. Well, um, when I go into a home, uh, usually people have just been discharged from the hospital or um, come home from a doctor's appointment where they change those meds. And that's kind of a complicated thing to change everything that you've been used to for the last few years. Um, so it's all about safety. I mean, we just want um, people to be safe. So we go, we go in there and we monitor their compliance. We um, teach them the importance of you know, taking the right medication at the right time, uh, you know, at the right dose. Um, and we just, you know, want to remember that that number one cause of fatalities is overdosing or accident, 
accidental med. So when you when you guys come in there uh, and you're doing the checks and do I mean I guess go through kind of what that what's that look like? So a nurse comes in, do you pull all your medications out, and how is that how does that come together? Uh, usually we reconcile, which just means that um, I take that list that they've gotten from the doctor and I look at the bottles and compare the two, make sure they have the right medications, um, you know the prescriptions filled. Um, and then set it up in the pill box and then talk to them about when they should take it and um, you know and give them hints and stuff about how to remind uh, remember to take it uh, and so many times too um, we all do it we have prescriptions that are no longer valid that we have in our medicine cabinet and we have seen many clients who literally have a few shoe boxes full of old mm -hmm. medications in that that's a huge risk. Yeah, there and you know this weekend. That's good. You speak about this as we do have med take back, yes, uh, or, or drug take backs this mm -hmm. weekend uh, and throughout the month. So certainly, you know, take advantage of that if you mm -hmm. can to get Definitely. to to take mm -hmm. that risk out of it. Um, talk a little bit about the uh, monitoring and reconciliation. <laughs> good big that's, word for me. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a hard but, word. But yeah. uh, let's just talk about that a little bit more on uh, the process. Right. Well, monitoring and reconciliation and reconciliation is a big word and as Cheryl said what it really means is you compare their latest list of medications either from the hospital or from their physician with what they actually have or what they don't have and it is amazing because it's like doing a puzzle to figure that out and it's very very important work and oftentimes um, the bottles the printing might be too small for people to see or they can't get the covers off and um, research has found that the most vulnerable times for medication errors um, are when you are just getting home from the hospital, you're being readmitted to the hospital, or returning to home from a physician's appointment, physician or a mid-levels appointment. Um, and careful, careful, re and like I said, we use reconciliation, um, really keeps people safe. I, I definitely, <laughs> mm -hmm. definitely believe that. Just putting any plan in place, I mean, is, is definitely a, a huge piece. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the monitoring, which exactly are you monitoring? Well, usually we use that list from the hospital at discharge, or the uh, doctor sends a medication list home with the patient, and we'll use that um, to reconcile and to make sure that everything's there. Um, sometimes if they don't have a list from the doctor, then we'll make one up for them so that they can kind of see what they're taking and follow. The more educated they are, the better. Um, so uh, we teach them to understand the reasons that they're taking them and what side effects they have. Um, and then we set, a, set them up and that helps us also to kind of monitor how well they're taking them and how um, accurately they're taking them. Um, and, you know, just think little things like um, helping them to understand if they should take it with food or without food, that kind of thing. Yeah, and this next question is the one that I think I'm waiting for is, <laughs> how do you remember to take those meds? <laughs> well, there's a number of different tools out there. Um, there's medication boxes and reminders, and Cheryl actually fills a lot of these boxes mm -hmm. for clients. Additionally, there's larger sizes, there's smaller sizes. I just brought some of the smaller Let me ones today. Hold these today. up for you so you yeah. can see them. Yeah, yeah I I like these. These are yeah. well. I've seen this one, but this is uh, this is kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah, here. if you like yeah. gadgets, that's a nice one. <laughs> and there's so many different kinds. There's there's some with um, four times a day, um, and there's some that even have little alarms on them. This one's pretty cool too. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, can't help myself here, <laughs> it's but still so funny. I I don't know. You can't see this, I probably, but it says on here it says supper, bedtime, lunch, and breakfast. That's amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yep. that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one of the other things that um, is good about these little reminders is that when Cheryl goes back into the home, she can look at the box at a glance and say, "Ooh, you missed Wednesday morning. Was something going on?" And um, so that's really important for compliance as well, because to get the best benefit, you know, you need to be compliant. Yeah, and, and uh, that leads here to the next question is, is how can uh, an at-home nurse make a difference? Well, <laughs> in a number of Who wants ways, to go first? I'll go first. <laughs> Cheryl plays an integral role in keeping people safe. 
Um, every patient gets an individualized developed care plan by a professional registered nurse. Um, that management also, we ask patients, um, do you take supplements? How about herbal remedies, you know, vitamins, those kinds of things, because a lot of those things can interact as well. Um, also, certainly, if you are on a certain blood thinner, you shouldn't be taking grapefruit juice with your breakfast each morning. We see if they can open the bottle. Um, we can see if they can see the pills to actually get them out of the little containers. And then when they're not compliant, we may say something like, is there some reason you miss this medication? And they'll say, you know what, that one bothers me. It gives me an upset stomach. And then we can look into it and see is that one that could be better taken at another time of day or with food. Um, or do they have swallowing issues? Sometimes for stroke patients, they have difficulty swallowing. And sometimes you can crush things in apple juice. And then we coordinate that with the pharmacist. And then, of course, what we do is we always let the physician or the provider know um, what kinds of things are are going on. There's also automatic pill boxes that um, families can purchase for their loved ones that actually have beeps and alarms on them. It, it depends on if you're a gadget person or not, or mm. if that is even more confusing to you. So everybody's different. Right. You got to find what works best uh, right. uh, for the person and maybe it's a multifaceted approach, you know, right. mm -hmm. uh, whatever, whatever yes. is going to help keep it exactly. consistent. Uh, exactly. and, and catch those faults. And two of the other things that I think really impact people's compliance is how expensive their prescriptions are because they think, I'll just skip a couple of doses here. It's getting close to the end of the month. That is a big one. And then another one that we've learned is that oftentimes people don't have a way to get their prescriptions from the pharmacy if the pharmacy doesn't deliver. They have to rely on a friend or a neighbor to go get it for them. Interesting. So. I didn't mm -hmm. even think of that side of, of yes. things uh, mm -hmm. being an issue, but definitely a, a concern. Um, well, we've, uh, we've, we've used up our time. You, you've done a, a really great job, great information. Uh, real quick, uh, how can folks get this set up, get this uh, moving forward if they want help? Well, they can certainly look us up online or they can call Independent Healthcare. We are happy to help. Our phone number is 608-274-2097. And again, our goal is to keep folks safe and keep them in their home as long as possible. Yeah, this is, uh, again, I rode on an ambulance for 10 years. I can yes. tell you that this, you, you don't know how big of a role this is. Um, and thank you uh, for, for doing this and, and for being nurses, too. That's yes, our you, pleasure. We love There's not we enough thank yous to go around uh, for what you guys do. So I appreciate the time, and uh, hopefully we can get you two back on the show. Great. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right, we'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Fitchburg.